Hello, my name is Andrew Wright, and I'm here to talk to you about a workshop we held in 2023 um, about introducing available tools for exploring human behaviors from social science uh, into the world of right whale conservation. And I'd like to thank all my co-authors listed here um, and the Pew Charitable Foundation for funding uh, the workshop. So the workshop was held after the North Atlantic Right Whale Consortium meeting in 2023 on October 26. It was an all day workshop and it was held in Halifax, Nova Scotia. The reasons we did this is because resolving right whale conservation issues uh, depends on understanding human behaviors and co-developing strategies for change. And this is the realm of social scientists rather than natural scientists. So uh, we were trying to bring social scientists in to explain their approaches about how we understand motivation and community drivers behind individual behaviors um, and help address conflicts between humans and the environment. And of course, we have some hope that this will uh, work out. So uh, the workshop had two main goals, uh, to introduce the participants from current interest groups like uh, fishers, um, natural scientists, government managers, et cetera, to a selection of social science research and approaches and introduce us invited social scientists uh, to the uh, scene in the North Atlantic right whale conservation issues and the challenges uh, around those. And then we were going to have a discussion about how the social science tools could be applied to improving North Atlantic right whale conservation. So who was here? Uh, well, we had the majority were non-governmental organizations, NGOs, uh, although there was a large contingent from both the natural science community and also the government um, uh, managers uh, community. Most people were from uh, the USA or Canada, although there were a few from further afield. And we did hold a pre-conference survey where we asked a number of questions. Um, however, the uh, focus of that survey was on the participants' feelings. How did they feel towards the North Atlantic right whale conservation issue? And you can see here the number of people were frustrated, worried, hesitant, uh, they felt urgent, desperate, angry. A lot of negative feelings uh, were, were presented, although you can also see uh, cautiously optimistic or optimistic or hopeful. So there was a smattering of positive um, uh, feelings about it too. So just to summarize what was presented on the day, well, we uh, had uh, yeah, NGO and a fisherman perspective uh, from both the USA and Canada, because those are very different regions, understanding that there are very different regions within both of those countries. Um, so the uh, group was given the perspectives of, of these two different uh, communities. Um, and so those were presented at the workshop. And then we delved into our social sciences, and um, revealed that the social sciences is not just one science, it's actually an aggregation of many, many sciences, uh, ranging from sort of the classic uh, psychology, et cetera, over to the interdisciplinary and the applied, such as conservation marketing. And all of these can be brought to bear at the North Atlantic right whale conservation issue. Now, conservation psychology is um, <clears throat> not just for influencing human behaviors, be pro-environmental, but it's also about understanding relationships between humans and nature. So it's two real elements to, to this, and that forms conservation psychology. Human behavior, um, these can be uh, influenced uh, relatively quickly on the grand scheme. Uh, you may or may not believe that, but it is true. Um, however, uh, it's values that uh, is where the basis uh, for all of our behaviors come. Uh, and those are a few in number, and they're very slow to change. They're deeply held and uh, hard to, to, to get at. These uh, are what our beliefs are, are formed on, and uh, you know, they don't have to be just religious beliefs. They can be beliefs about the world around us. Um, and they're informed by not only our values, but also the information around us. These then leverage attitudes, uh, which collectively in a community form social norms. And then our behaviors are on top of that within the, the framework of all of these other things that have gone before. Now, worldviews are uh, sort of a, a, a range of things from values to beliefs and attitudes, all sort of together. And you might think of these as, as sort of a financial worldview or a, um, a community based worldview or, or whatever. Now, it's important to note here that changing behavior isn't enough. And you can convince a, a young girl, um, one of our presenters' daughters here, to uh, play the 
violin if there's a report card on the on the hook and they want to do well in school or maybe you're bribing them with some sort of reward for doing well uh, they will play the the violin for their classes however if they are not motivated to keep doing this after those payments or the report cards are gone then it's unlikely this behavior will be sustained and that brings us into our motivations, um, which are somewhere in the realms of beliefs and values. Um, but it, it explains sort of the people we are and what drives us. This is why we do what we do. And we all fall into this range. We all have a little bit of each of these in us. Um, and it may be that you are primarily driven by self uh, uh, direction and personal growth, or maybe about uh, security and uh, care of the community. Whatever it is, we all fall into this spectrum somewhere. However, it's important to know we all commonly make incorrect, incorrect assumptions about the motivations of others. Uh, for example, a lot of the NGOs in the meeting thought that the fishermen uh, who were in the room were just uh, doing that job for money. Um, however, the fishermen, on the other hand, believed it was uh, because they had a care for their community and their family, um, because that was part of their traditions and it was embedded in their, those communities. So um, we all make uh, incorrect assumptions about motivations of others and social science is can help us reveal uh, things a little more clearly. Social marketing, we're all familiar with. It's the pr process of using traditional marketing principles and techniques to influ influence the behavior of citizens in a way that's beneficial for them and also likely society. Think of the anti-smoking campaigns that we had in the 80s and 90s. Um, and people are generally uh, falling into one of these three categories. They're either in the sort of show me category, the early adopters, and these are people where you just go, look, smoking's bad for you. And they say, well, I'm not smoking anymore. And at the other end, you say, well, smoking's bad for you. And those are people that are never going to stop. And in the middle, you have a lot of people that are, are in this sort of help me category. These are the people that can be pulled along um, if you make it easy for them, if you uh, help them overcome the barriers to the behavioral change. And that's what social marketing does. So you could think of it as a loop. Um, you define the environmental problem at hand. You conduct a stakeholder analysis uh, so that you can learn a little bit about the motivations of the people you want to, to, to influence. And then you synthesize the data and you design an intervention. Um, and that is the stage where uh, you would see campaigns come out, ads, other things, maybe nudges, all sorts of techniques can be thrown in. You then have to pilot that. And that's a stage we often overlook in conservation. We just want to out to do the good that we think it's going to do. Uh, but it doesn't always work the way you're expecting. Uh, there are things you may have uh, overlooked and uh, it can backfire if you don't do it right. So a small pilot project is usually a good place to do before you launch broadly, at which point you have to monitor and evaluate your impact. Otherwise, you really don't know if you've been successful. Think of it another way. It's about providing accurate information using clear messages. And that's based on uh, uh, the theory of social science and all the data you've collected. And you can intervene at multiple levels to give multiple little pushes in the right direction. And it's important to know that one size does not fit all um, because you've got uh, different groups within your target audience. Uh, you'll never have one message that reaches everyone. And working with community uh, influences is, is often a good way to go. The East framework is, is one way of applying these techniques to a campaign. And it's about providing easy options for people uh, that are attracted to them in timely way. So it's, it's when they're ready for it. Um, and it's about uh, connecting with social norms um, uh, that can help also drive the uh, behavioral changes. We saw the Amazing for the Park campaign as an example of this, where um, the desire was to stop people getting too close to sea turtles on beaches uh, in Hawaii. And so they were going to replace existing um, signage and outreach with new designs. Noah came up with this design, uh, which is uh, reasonably clinical in telling people not to touch, never feed, stay 10 feet apart. It's all in there, both in, in Japanese and, and uh, English because of the, the tourist uh, population. Um, and so this was trialed. This is the uh, platform designed by the social science campaign. And you can see immediately it's a little more attractive. Um, it's also placing the behavior you want as the positive behavior. So instead of saying, don't go near the animals, you can say, it, they're amazing from afar. So you're already positioning behavior you want in a positive way. 
So it's timely in the fact that uh, it's also telling people, thank you for being a respectful viewer. So you're in the moment, you're there, you're not approaching a turtle and it's thanking you for doing that. So it, it provides immediate positive feedback for the behavior you're trying to get. Plus by providing uh, a, a graphic of a, a Volkswagen Beetle, it uh, supports an easy uh, um, how-to to, to make the behavior possible rather than just say 10 feet, which is a little more esoteric. On the back of these posters or on, on promotional materials, there was further material about a timely replacement behavior. Again, rather than getting that selfie of you snuggled up right next to a sea turtle, they're suggesting ways that you can get a cool picture that you can immediately put on social media and start collecting likes. And that brings in the social element too. You want to be popular, you want to have uh, people uh, feedback, and if you have a cool picture like a sea turtle in a heart, for example, um, and you attach the hashtag show off your 10, um, then it's entirely possible you get that immediate feedback and that reinforces the behavior. It was trialed out on a beach in the north of uh, Oahu. And you can see the NOAA signs uh, did uh, improve behavioral, um, sorry, the compliance with the behavior over existing signage. However, the amazing from afar campaign uh, took it uh, a lot further. Um, this was only a small study of uh, 1300 people. Uh, so they then did a, a larger study. So this is, uh, that was the pilot. This is the main effort. And you can see here that 69% uh, compliance with NOAA or existing signs on average, and over 90% compliance when you start using the amazing from afar campaigns in different particular sub-regions. And that was over 10,000 people testing. So armed with all this information, we had a brainstorming session about what might be done if the North Atlantic right whales take Newfoundland. So it's a hypothetical situation where uh, right whales have maybe moved into Placentia Bay or somewhere else in large numbers um, and putting them in, in, in conflict with a, um, a new uh, fishing community. And how can we deal with that? So we split up into three different groups uh, and each group was made up of a mixture of interest groups. So you had a fisherman with a scientist, a uh, natural scientist, sorry, with a, a government rep, uh, with an NGO, etc. And we discussed um, with a hypothetical data set, so we're making some assumptions here, uh, but we discussed what might be done in that situation. And the first campaign was uh, beer on the pier with a pier, and it was going to encourage one-on-one -on -one interactions between fishers and their peers uh, through hosting of events demonstrating the new gear and its uses, rather than focusing on the impacts of the fishing activities on the whales. Importantly, there was beer, so how, something positive to bring people in. And the trick is to avert, involve those early adoptives, help bringing over the help me group into those that are, are picking up the community. Um, and in this case, we're trying to encourage the uptake of on-demand fishing gear to remove uh, uh, the um, uh, end lines from the water column uh, and reduce entanglements in, in North Atlantic right whales. So the informal nature of this type of event uh, was intended to reduce uh, uh, skepticism and uh, potentially uh, uh, improve the uptake through the informal teaching. The second option uh, was developed was uh, to focus on evolving traditions and position the fishing gear, uh, on-demand fishing gear, as just the next evolution in fishing that's been going on uh, since fishing began. Um, so you've had new texts such as uh, radar, GPS, AIS materials, mobile satellite phones, etc, etc, etc. And it's just uh, one part of this ongoing evolution of fishing. Uh, so highlighting, highlighting e um, innovation as a, a, a central part of the fishing activity. The hashtag don't be like your dad was suggested to bring in a little bit of humor. Um, however, there was some concern that might offend some people that are very family centric. Uh, so that sort of uh, thing would need to be piloted and it would probably be informed by the, the uh, data collected and synthesized that we didn't do in this occasion. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the third and final campaign that was generated by our breakout groups was to expand the um, existing Canadian uh, Wildlife Federation Canfish program into Newfoundland and promote that locally. And this is a program that lends on-demand fishing gear to uh, fishermen so they can trial it out, see how it works, get to grips with it, and if they don't like it, give it back, try another piece. Um, so it's intended on removing the financial barriers on the on-demand gear. 
The uh, supplement to that was for uh, subsidies to be provided to fishermen for actual purchase of the on-demand system once they pick one that they like. And it was noted that this should probably be administered by a neutral third party to avoid building up a conflict um, between the, the gear and the fishers uh, rather than you know, the government regulations and the fishers, which always have a um, semi-tense uh, relationship uh, between regulator and regu regulatee. So um, if that could be administered by a neutral third party, that would seem to be uh, beneficial. And because this was a Canadian area, uh, the suggestion was made to position the U.S. Marine Mammal Protection Act bycatch limits as a common enemy to both the cons conservation groups and the fishers so that uh, um, uh, those two communities sort of come together to advance the uptake of on-demand gear so that uh, uh, the right whales could be saved and lobster and crab and so forth could continue to be exported to the USA. We didn't conduct a formal survey, but we did get some feedback from participants after the workshop, and that unsolicited feedback was generally pretty positive. Uh, participants were uh, able to visualize directions forward in the North Atlantic right whale uh, conservation challenges than they had previously uh, thought. So uh, new considerations, new directions, and that gave people a lot more hope and they were positive about it. They reported gaining a new appreciation for the perspectives of other stakeholders uh, in the debate, and that was just from our interactions in the meeting. Um, and that enhanced their understa understanding of why previous initiatives may have fallen short. One participant uh, went as far to thank organizers for the pre-workshop survey because it felt good to, to be asked uh, about how they feel about this. Um, and it was a genuine uh, inquiry about how um, uh, the group felt about the problem uh, rather than just lip service. So they felt it was, it was nice to, to be engaged in a genuine way. So conclusions and recommendations that came out of this workshop. Well, conservation efforts to date, including um, those that have been uh, uh, implemented through the use of traditional media campaigns, have had some key successes, and the North Atlantic right whale may not be here today without them. However, it remains in decline, and um, certain elements of past and current conservation efforts may have had similarities with social science-based efforts. For example, the Canfish uh, program is connecting with early adopters and helping remove financial barriers to entry into the use of on-demand. However, it's more than just financial barriers. Um, and as we saw, if you don't uh, uh, find a way to reach out to uh, the motivations of the individuals involved, um, rather than just uh, applying a financial uh, uh, reward for, for entry, uh, those behaviors may not last. So there's more we can and should do to help uh, the uptake of on-demand gear. Acknowledging also that there are still some technological barriers to overcome to having this uh, deployed on a, a wide scale. The key thing is that the mammal responsible for effective North Atlantic right whale conservation is human, not cetacean. And that is the realm of the social sciences, um, not the natural scientists. So as I said, many barriers to, to pro-conservation action are based in non-financial values and motivations and, and social science approaches are very good at identifying these barriers and ways to overcome them. Repositioning actions into the lens of other values and motivations can also help bypass conflict and objections. And funders should be encouraged to um, involve social sciences and social scientists at all stages of conservation efforts when they receive um, um, proposals and so forth. So thank you all very much for listening. Um, if you uh, have any questions, please reach out to me.